December 7th, 2021. Habcast 201, episode 201. Let's go. Happy Tuesday, you guys. Of course, I have a few things to share with you. An evening of reflection. Shall we? Texas plumber who found cash in Lakewood Ball upset with Joel Osteen. He should have heard something. First off, if you're being a good Samaritan, if you're being a good person, and you're going to turn the money in just out of the goodness of your heart, then you shouldn't be expecting a round of applause. Don't expect to be publicly commended for your actions because, after all, you're not doing it for notoriety. You're doing it because you did the right thing, right? Now, that being said, oh, I would have took about it (laughs) because the money is not supposed to be there in the first place. So what money? (laughs) Oh, it's an early Christmas family. The Texas plumber who found cash in a wall and preacher Joel, oh, what cash? And Joel Osteen's Lakewood Church said he's upset that no one from the church has contacted him. Uh, I wanted to hear Joel Osteen say, you know, Justin, what you did was right. Uh, We understand what you did and what you could have done. The man said after attending a service held by Joel Osteen on Sunday, what is he supposed to invite you to the pulpit and say that you found a bunch of like a stolen, a bunch of stolen money? inside the church which is already kind of like embarrassing to have to explain this in the first place uh i feel like at this point i should have heard something he said i'm just a little upset uh the plumber found the cash in the wall of a church and about 500 envelopes i mean hey out of 500 envelopes if you take 25 envelopes who's gonna know who's gonna argue First off, because no, there was really 500 envelopes. Hey, how do you know how many envelopes there were? Nobody's going to dispute how much money you actually found in the wall. Like, (laughs) if anything, Houston police said the money is in connection to a 2014 robbery at the church where $200,000 in cash and $400,000 in checks were stolen from a church safe. There was a loose toilet in the wall, and we removed. The tile, the plumber said, on 100.3 FM's morning show, uh, we went to go remove the toilet and I moved some insulation away and about 500 envelopes fell out of the wall. 100 envelopes at 50. 25 envelopes fell out of the wall. (laughs) (laughs) The church also released a statement saying police were contacted after the discovery was made. Uh, I was discouraged the first time. Longtime parishioner Benito Rodriguez told Click2 Houston, referring to the 2014 theft. I was discouraged, and now I am more discouraged because they found it. It doesn't make any sense. It made, I found some money back there while I was working on the toilet. Yeah, what money? How much? How much money? Uh, a lot? How much is a lot? Um, <laughs> How much is a lot? I don't know. It was about 500 envelopes of, uh, yeah. Did you tell anybody else? Uh, no, you're the only person that knows. Well, here, here you go. And make sure nobody, make sure nobody knows about this. Thank you. You've done a good thing. You have a good Christmas. You and your family here. There you go. (laughs) If you like the show, don't forget to subscribe. Leave a comment. Let me know you're rocking with your boy. Yes. Debt collectors can now contact you on social media. No, they can't post that you owe money. (laughs) So when you on Instagram with your boo, with your love in that hot air balloon over the Swiss Alps (laughs) and Renna Center is commenting on your post, like I see you living your best life, Mr. Johnson. We'll see you when you get back. (laughs) The pandemic related relief either ended or exhausted debt totals are creeping up for Americans. Uh, credit card balances jumped by $17 billion 
to 800 billion for the third quarter of the year. People were spending like, like, well, we're all going to die anyway. Like, yeah, you spend it like you can't take it with you, according to a report from the Federal Reserve Bank. And you wake up that next morning and everybody's alive. Uh, bank, uh, especially the people that you owe the money to, they're alive and well <laughs> of New York City for microeconomic data. The rise in credit card debt is reversing the pandemic trend that saw customers spending less and paying down their balances. So what it's basically saying is that we were getting into a habit of paying our debt down. Financial anxiety is particularly pronounced for Generation Z ages 13 to 14 who's 13 years old and is part of this 800 billion dollar debt <laughs> sheesh a new survey found that 37 percent of these young adults said their own or their family's finances were a major source of stress according to a recent survey by the associated press norc center for public affairs research next year could see more people in debt and being chased by debt collection companies that now have new ways to find debtors. Yeah, you <laughs> you got every pair of J's like two days before they drop. Here's what you need to know about your rights. Is it true that a debt collector can contact me via my social media account? Yes, that request to connect on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram could very well be from a debt collection company. Oh, careful. Can a debt collector, and obviously there's more to it i'm just reading the top lines of every article uh of every piece uh can the debt collector post something about my debts online i certainly hope so <laughs> <laughs> and see how many people turn their comments off on everything they post uh the rule change is supposed is supposed to protect your privacy the debt collector can't post something that can be seen by the general public. Yeah, <laughs> they could DM you like that. Hey, I see what you, yeah, I see how you're doing out there, homeboy. Yeah, your contacts, your friends, or followers. For example, the debt collector couldn't comment on your profile page indicating that you owe a debt. What proof does the debt collector have to provide me that I owe the debt? Uh, when a debt collector initially communicates with you or shortly thereafter, the company is generally required to provide certain information about the debt, according to the CFPB. If I don't want to be contacted, is there a way to stop receiving the messages? It's not going to make the bills go away, baby. You can't ignore it. <laughs> Under the new rules, the debt collector must give you a simple way to opt out of receiving future communications through your social media account according to the cfpb i don't know if i really like this because can they get a hold of your 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 personal information like to try to see yeah i don't know if i really like this too much. it's hilarious for me now I mean, <laughs> but if some if a debt collector was actually using this to try to uh to um take action to take some type of action to like garnish wages or something to use this or yeah i don't know uh how can i be sure that a message is it from a scammer you can't <laughs> here's where things can get tricky and how a scammer can trick you into sending them money or divulging personal information uh being able to contact people via social media accounts is very concerning to us sherry said uh, a lot of spammers and scammers are using text messages so people need to be very cautious sherry recommends that you don't click on any links in an email text message or respond to a direct message until you have independently verified the debt collector is legitimate uh how often can the debt collector call me um under the debt collection rule a debt collector contacting you on the telephone can't call more than seven times within a seven day period per debt and of course there's like a couple other things that uh you can look up on your own online things that if you that if you owe folks and you know who you are if you owe folks that you should know already i just wanted to cover the uh the the social media aspect of it because that is different i would love to i would love to know what politician or who signed off on this for them people to be under your your instagram post on your twitter post are you ziplining through Peru in the jungle? <laughs>
you're living a lifestyle of a superstar. <laughs> and <laughs> I would love to know who signed off on that. That is hilarious. Liar charged and jumped to tarmac. Family says he thought someone was trying to kill him. What? The? A man arrested in Phoenix, Arizona on Saturday morning after jumping out of an airplane's galley door to the tarmac as the plane was taxiing to a gate. Police said, as his family believes he may have been grappling with mental illness, Daniel Ramirez, uh, 30, was charged with two counts of trespassing, accused of opening the back door of the plane he had been on and jumping out as it landed at Phoenix's Sky Harbor International Airport. So he did make the whole flight with no issues. Uh, the, the, South, the Southwest Airlines flight had been arriving from Colorado Springs on Saturday morning. After jumping out, Ramirez had made his way to a nearby fire department and locked himself inside. Authority said uh, the flight's captain, this isn't your normal run-of-the-mill case of somebody just had way too many drinks and they just wanted to cut up on the airplane. No, this is somebody that was actually going through, yes, yeah, said he was grappling with mental illness and he still had the wherewithal to make the whole flight with no issues to get on the ground first before he sought help. Unlike some of these people get on a plane and they can't control themselves. Uh, all the remaining passengers were able to get to their gate. Once authorities arrived after a few minutes, uh, firefighters were able to get to the adult male to unlock the door where he was then evaluated, treated and transported to a local hospital for a lower extremity injury. There's no excuse. For you people who are not grappling with any type of mental illness, who are just who just want to uh, go against the grain, this shows that there is no excuse for your behavior on these planes. Uh, transported to a local hospital for a lower extremity injury, Captain Todd Keller with the Phoenix Fire Department told Fox 11, uh, members of Ramirez's family spoke with ABC 15 on Saturday and said that he told them that he feared for his life. He had reportedly been working a tiling job in Colorado Springs, but flew home early because he believed someone was after him and might try to kill him. I don't want him to be portrayed as some, oh, some crazy guy that jumped off of the plane. Teresa Padilla uh, Ramirez's mother, who video called with them prior to the flight, said, you know, I mean, he was running and hiding because he thought somebody was after him. Uh, the video call with Ramirez reportedly lasted for hours ending only when he had to board the plane. We were on the phone with him for seven hours. Sister-in-law Emily Levano said he was paranoid, saying someone's going to get me, someone's going to kill me. Uh, I told him, I said, we're not going to leave you alone. Padilla continued, we're not going to leave you alone. Uh, the family said they want Ramirez to receive a mental evaluation before his case moves forward, having told the Phoenix Police Department that they believe he needs help uh, they also suspect that Ramirez could be dealing with the case of schizophrenia or on account of the family's history with the condition. I think he did a great job of keeping himself composed, even though he was uh, going through it. He was up against it during the whole flight. Yeah, I think he did a really good job of keeping himself together. If anything, he should be a prime example of how to conduct yourself on a plane and not uh, and not want to beat up on the flight attendants. And throw food and uh and grope and grope the stewardesses and stuff. <laughs> Elon Musk says Neuralink will start implanting chips in humans in 2022. And finally, Skynet <laughs> is on its way to becoming fully operational. Elon Musk claims his Neuralink, a brain interface technology company, is less than a year away from implanting chips into human brains and when i read this i get the feeling that if he says they're going to start doing this in 2022 that means they've been experimenting on this since like 2012 i just get a real weird feeling uh human not not they probably were doing animals in like 2005 and moved up to human i just get this horrible feeling that they've been doing this if you're just going to roll it out a year later now all of a sudden it's ready to be uh yeah no come on the news comes from the billionaire himself during a live stream interview with the Wall Street Journal CEO, 
Council Summit on Monday when he asked about plans for the company, uh, when asked about plans for the company in 2022. What if he would have got up on a podium and just like and just open like the side of his head and said, I'm not only the president, I'm a client and <laughs> Neuralink's working well in monkeys. And we're actually doing just a lot of testing and just confirming that it's very safe and reliable and a Neuralink device can be removed safely, Musk said. We hope to have this in our first humans, which will be people that have severe spinal cord injuries like tetraplegics, quadriplegics next year pending FDA approval. I think we have a chance of being able to allow someone who cannot walk or use their arms uh, be able to walk again but not naturally. Neuralink system is comprised of a computer chip attached to tiny flexible threads that are stitched into the brain by a sewing machine like robot. Wait, is this, is this a monkey smoking hookah? This is what you're spending billions of dollars on for this type of research? That's a monkey, you put a chip in a monkey's head to teach him how to smoke hookah? No. <laughs> Replacing faulty missing neurons with circuits is the right way to think about it. Many problems can be solved uh, just bridging signals between existing neurons. Uh, the device picked up signals in the brain, which are then translated into motor controls. Musk says that the technology has proven to be safe in the brain and can be easily removed. It's just something that makes me squirm about them noodling around with your noodle. The only thing holding Neuralink back from human trials is FDA approval. Uh, Musk shared a tweet on Monday reiterating the 22. 2022 timeline stating that Neuralink's pro progress will accelerate once the device is, is in humans next year. Accelerate. This just sounds so Terminator, uh, total recall. Yeah, it's a super big deal, and I don't want to raise hopes unreasonably, but I am convinced it can be done, he said. Along with helping people walk again, Musk has also said Neuralink's chip could help cure addiction and depression. Fun show. Fun show. Fun show. That being said, I'm going to wrap this one up, but I'll be sure to talk to you guys very, very soon. Adios.